right, people, grab your sketch pads, some color swatches, get ready to feng shuiify your tables and chairs because we're redesigning meetings, right, John? Not exactly. We're going to take a little bit more of a strategic look at redesigning your meeting. But this is about meeting makeovers, right? Well, actually, Greg and I are going to share some really useful tips for planners to redesign their meetings, so stay tuned. Ah, well, apparently I have a lot to learn, so why don't we go take a look together? We're fortunate to have with us Greg Van Dyke, Senior Vice President, PSAV, and John Folks, President, Minding Your Business. Welcome. Thank Thanks you. very much. Thank the you. The subject today is redesigning your meeting. And Greg, I'll start with you because I don't think uh, a planner would say, I'm always redesigning my meeting. Every, every meeting is a new meeting. But I think you're talking about something broader than that, aren't you? I think that when planners say, I'm always redesigning my meeting, they're talking about redesigning their general session. And this is really thinking about things a little bit more strategically from a comprehensive standpoint. And so I know just walking out of the general session from uh, community leaders this year in Orlando, they talked about the meeting is the design, the design is the experience. And so that's what I would, I think we look at the session is, are you really thinking about strategically, AV, not a checkbox or not an experience for the general session, but how you provide your meeting attendee and experience from before they leave at home, all the way through to repurposing your content after the meetings. So that's when I talk about strategic meeting design is a comprehensive life cycle experience. I would have to agree with you, Greg, because I, I, I really think that when most planners are looking at their meeting, they are looking at that general session, and it really does take stepping back, looking much more broadly at the whole experience. And I think it's absolutely critical now more than ever because, uh, you know, Things are changing. Attendees' expectations have really climbed much more, much, much higher. And I think that um, in order to continue to deliver the kind of value that our attendees expect for them to keep coming back year after year, we've got to really start to freshen that experience. More than that, we have to freshen it in a way that's going to make sure that we're delivering value to that attendee. And is it, is it uh, for both of you, I guess, uh, not just AV but or, or technology, it's also content, right? Is that correct? It absolutely is. And I think that, you know, while AV is an absolutely critical part, you know, AV and technology, generally speaking, um, yeah, it's content. It's how we deliver that education and that content. Um, it is the elements around there, those touch points that we create throughout that three or four day experience uh, that really help us to kind of connect with that audience and that help them engage with the organization as well. And you both have an advantage because a planner is to some degree siloed because we all do our jobs and we do them the way we were taught to do them and we do them every day. They don't get that horizontal slice that says, what are other planners thinking of? But Greg, do, do, are planners thinking increasingly strategically about these things or is this still an issue? You know, we find some planners who are, and the, let's, to be fair to the planners, there are so many demands and so many things you have to take care of. Yeah, it's a really. harder and harder job. However, you know, if, if they need to think, we're, we are encouraging them to think more strategically because you talk about content. So have you developed a content plan for your meeting itself? So do you have a vision for, you've got these wonderful speakers, these wonderful experiential elements in your general session. Are you capturing those to repurpose them later in your meeting either for education, continuing education, but also for marketing for your meeting. So then if you're using it for marketing for the, your meeting, you're really starting the uh, the marketing program we're reaching out for next year's overall meeting attendance. So let's use it from a marketing program, which helps from budgets, by the way, because everyone's budget is only X. So how do you engage other sponsors and or other stakeholders in your organization to help fuel the budget? So it goes back to the yeah. life cycle. So I think that's really interesting. And I think um, another benefit to that is monetization because uh, there's an opportunity not only to monetize the content and sell it afterwards, but also to actually monetize it during the course of that meeting. I've seen where some planners have actually sold access to that general session content to exhibitors in the exhibit hall mm. who then show it live in the hall, driving traffic into their booths. Uh, great idea. So I think there's a lot of ways to use technology to, to really kind of repurpose that content, both currently you know, during the session itself, but then also to extend that experience and really kind of continue to engage that audience throughout the year. Yeah, and I've always been interested because the RFP process affects so many things. It, it is what it is, and it is what it is for good reason, but still, doesn't it get in the way of thinking strategically? I mean, wh when does the process begin? Because but I, but what I might interject, and if you touch on briefly experiential touch point mapping, because I think that gets right. the idea of, yes, you have to respond to an RFP, but if you engage with, at the end of the day, it's a partnership. 
with the association, and we have to help them think strategically. And I think ETM is a great way of doing that. So yeah, yeah, ETM is a, a proprietary approach that we utilize to really kind of map out the experience for the attendee. So we kind of take a look at that experience, and we identify those touch points. Every opportunity you have to kind of engage with that attendee, to touch them in some way, whether it be through communication or branding. Um, and it may start out at the registration desk and then through the general session and the meals, et cetera. What we'd look to do is really try to expand uh, and magnify and multiply those touch points for each group. So you really have an opportunity to, to make that meeting a little bit more sticky uh, and really kind of engage that audience a little bit more closely, um, which of course then allows you to leverage that meeting uh, a little bit longer. Um, and I think also you had mentioned a little bit earlier, Greg, about the fact that really it's about extending the experience beyond those three or four days that we're together, right? How do you kind of engage people before they come? And how do you continue to engage afterwards? And I think that's where you have an opportunity to really partner with your AV company and your technology provider to look for ways to really kind of repurpose that content and to extend that experience throughout. You know, you've got this great opportunity to leverage all this great content. Uh, and I think technology and, and, and working with your AV provider can help do that. And where would I, um, I'm a planner, my budgets have been cut, I'm, I'm, I'm understaffed, I'm overworked, yep. I'm multitasking, where do I get help? Who do I turn to? Because everything you've said is, sounds great, now what do I do? There's two elements, is one is I think you, you, we, first thing we would encourage is everything's not always a finite budget. Right. So how, could, when I say that, how can we help identify and work with you early on to identify potential ways to create monetization opportunities. So we understand it's a business world, but if we're able to create monetizable assets for either your, your meeting attendees or your, the, the sponsors of your meeting, we ha can help you get out of that budget crunch. Secondly, with advanced planning, you can use technology to replace other elements, other scenic elements. So mm -hmm. technology will cost, but technology can also drive down other costs. So again, with those advanced planning elements are ways for us to help raise the total number and help you manage the, the, the bottom line as well. Yeah, I think those are two great suggestions. And I think the other thing is that, uh, that you know, oftentimes that annual meeting is the centerpiece for an organization's you know, member engagement strategy or customer engagement strategy, right? It's bringing those people together. It's your brand platform. It's the opportunity to kind of really deliver value, uh, the value um, for the organization. And so sometimes it takes an investment. And some, sometimes you have to look at not uh, the fact that how do I do this less expensively, but if this is such an important asset for us, perhaps we need to invest to make some real changes uh, in that experience. And uh, so you may have to look at other, uh, you know, outside of monetization opportunities, perhaps you go into your reserves or look for other uh, budget line items that you can invest that money uh, to drive other, uh, other elements. But it definitely sounds like you're both talking about it as look at ROI, not just cost. I mean, yes. What I love about this approach is at the end of the day, your meeting, your meeting is for education and your meeting is for your member engagement but you have to tap into uh, getting new, uh, new audiences. You have to tap into your marketing budget. You have to so there's more than one way to look at these different things. And if you look at it from a strategic overall thing, what's it mean for your organization and your attendee, it allows you to think about things holistically. So I, and let's face it, we all have, we tend to chop things up into our little organizations. That's a real challenge for us. Let's take that step back and we yeah. think about talking strategically because what's the overall macro purpose of all this and how do we all work together? I guess the last question would be if you would, had a room full of planners, uh, yeah. which I think is your primary yeah. audience. What would you say to them? What, what, what would your couple of tips or advice that you'd give them on this subject? Big piece, you know, the, the big piece of advice from an education or advice standpoint is, uh, I would encourage everyone to not just look and think about A, B, or your meeting from your, just, your general session as what I'll call a tick box. Think about the communication objectives, think about the goals of your organization, and how do you think about not just the general session, but the overall experience, and I think that if you look to how to, to maximize their overall experience and to engage your attendees all along the way, your audiovisual provider and your event technology providers can give you some great ideas to help you get there. So bring us in early and help us think about the overall strategy, the overall path, and I think we can help you achieve your communication objectives. I would have to agree with Greg 100%. I think all of those things are critical. The other thing that I think is absolutely important uh, is that the meeting professional today has to know their audience even better than they did before. They've got to understand the audience by segment. They've got to understand the wants, needs, and desires of those, uh, of those audience members so that they can then design an event experience that's going to meet their needs. Uh, because if they're not delivering on that promise, they won't get them back again in the future. So um, uh, I think that's what I would suggest. Perfect. 
great advice from two industry pros. There you go. Thank you. Greg, John, thank you. Thank you very much, it. a lot of fun. We've been speaking to Greg Van Dyke, Senior Vice President, PSAV, and John Folks, President, Minding Your Business. Thank you.